All right, my friends, so let's take a look now at the PIR sensor. This is a infrared sensor, and what it does is it detects the infrared radiation that we as humans give off. Maybe you didn't even realize we do, but we do. We give off infrared radiation, so do animals. And what this sensor really allows us to do is detect changes in infrared ra radiation that it's receiving. And we can then write some program, and we can actually work through, this is uh, the sensor right here, uh, we can actually increase the sensitivity or decrease the sensitivity to write some programs when it detects the infrared radiation. And so I love this sensor. I have used it. I have a little Lego structure I've built that has this mounted right inside my sunroom, um, right in front of a, I, I bought a clear case bird feeder that sticks to the window. So anytime birds come, um, this sensor detects it. And then I have a camera hooked up and it takes a picture of the birds. And then I have a bird Gmail account and it just emails the pictures to that account. Um, and then maybe that's a project I'll show you here um, down the road. But for today, what we want to do here is just make sure we can get this infrared sensor working. So I'm going to go here to our programs. We're going to be back here to move again um, and just see that we can get it to detect by just printing out a command in our software. And so what I want to do, let me go ahead and um, find my code here. I was messing with some code earlier. And so I'm going to pull this code up here, but what you need to know for your wiring, and you can follow the project guide on the Physical Computing with Python on the Raspberry Pi website, we're going to use their wiring mechanism. But what I have here is your infrared sensor has three wires. Now, we haven't done a whole lot with any sensors or outputs requiring three wires, where most of ours so far, the LED, the buzzer, have just been two wires, a, a power supply and the ground and we've just been activating it you know basically turn it on turn it off well the infrared sensor has a third one here so there is one called the VCC which will be labeled on your sensor um, that goes to our power supply and this one's actually going to be plugged into our 5 volt outlet for the, the this program it needs a little more juice than the 3.3 there's the other one that's labeled GND, that's our ground. So basically these are the two that we've been using. But there's a third one called out. This is, think of this as the way to activate our sensor. So it allows us to use a signal to do some work with it when it is activated. So what we do here is we've got, um, in this case, your VCC goes to the 5 volt, that's the top right column one if you want to use that one. A ground can go to any ground, that doesn't matter. And our output for this one, we're using GPIO pin number four, but you can use any pin that you would like. And we just have that wired up on the Raspberry Pi. I know it's hard to see, but by now, I mean three weeks in, this should make sense of what I'm verbally expressing here to you. And so there are two potentiometers on the sensor and I know it's hard to see but you have like these two brown knobs uh, that are on there. One of these works with the intensity or the sensitivity excuse me of the sensor so you can activate how strong or how sensitive you want it to respond to the radiation um, and the other one is think of it as like a period of time uh, before it resets. So you've got those two things, and you can turn those clockwise or counterclockwise. If they're fully anti-clockwise, that means the sensitivity and the timeout are at their lowest. And so depending on your room and your space and what you're trying to detect, you might want to play around with those. But for today, we're going to write just some basic code here uh, for our sensor. So we're adding the from GPIO0, and we're going to import a new one called motion sensor. So we have now done things as LED, um, traffic lights, buzzer, button. Now we're importing motion sensor. We're then gonna create our, our variable, variable, so to speak. So our PIR, that's the name of our sensor, is motion sensor. And we are in GPIO pin number four. So if you're not using four, do you put in your own number there. And we're just gonna create a loop block here. So while true, we're gonna wait. We've done this with the button, right? We've done button, dot wait for press 
Now we're doing PIR, wait for motion. It's gonna wait for it to trigger motion. And in this case, it's just gonna print, you've been spotted. And once it's done that, then it's gonna wait for no more motion to be activated, and then this loop's gonna start over again. So when we go to run this here, it'll probably trigger it right away, okay? So it says you've been spotted. But if we wait for no motion here, um, we should be able to have it go again. And so it triggered again, but that's probably because I, I just bumped the table and it shook the sensor, therefore it's gonna trigger it. All right, so now when we do this here, oh, let's wait for no motion. All right, so let's go ahead here. I think we should be calm now in this loop. So now it should detect. There we go. And it detected my hand movement, that radiation coming off my hand. And now it's going to wait for zero motion before it loops back. And then it's gonna to continue to wait here for motion to be detected again. So I think here we've waited long enough. There we go. And we've got it again. So you can play around with that, play with the sensitivity. This is just to get you kind of thinking about this sensor. It's an awesome sensor that can do lots of great things. Um, and so I can't wait to share some future projects with you of how we use this sensor for some cool stuff that uh, me and my daughter are working on. All right, my friends, that's the PIR sensor. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. Peace.